So since we didn't have a perfectly randomized experiment and some DMAs, for example, those with large revenues were systematically not allowed to participate in the treatment to turn off their search engine marketing, we have to control for this systematic differences in the DMAs. And we could do this by adding this dummy, whether the DMA is in the treatment group or not. Alternative, we control, could control by so-called DMA fixed effects. So this would mean that we would add a separate dummy variable for each DMA. So for an example, assume we would have only three different DMAs in our data set. 501, 502, and 503 would be the codes of these three A's. Then we would generate three dummy variables, DMA 501, DMA 502, and DMA 503, and add them as columns to our data set. And for example, this DMA 501 variables is only one for the rows that are associated to the DMA 501. So, uh, for the first day for DMA 501, it's a one. And then when we have uh, the row for DMA 501 in the second row, this variable is again one. And otherwise, it's zero. And similar, we have the dummy variables for the two other DMAs. So in each row, exactly only one of this DMA dummies is equal to one. And all the others are equal to zero. Yeah, so in our actual data set, we have 210 different DMAs. So this implies a lot of dummy variables. 210 dummy variables. Maybe one will be dropped and it's 209, but it doesn't really make a big difference. And such dummy, dummy variables for categories with many levels are often called fixed effects. And the expression fixed effects come from the panel data literature. So a, a panel data set is a data set like ours, where we observe different units i. Here these are the DMAs over several time periods t. So here we observe each DMA for def uh, several days. And um, historically in the panel data literature, there are different ways of how you can control them for region-specific effects. And one way was to add these region-specific dummies, like we did here. This was called fixed effects. And different way to address this was a so-called random effects effect model, where one assumed that Effects can vary between regions, but they follow some random distribution. Interestingly, this random effects estimation, I think, is not much done anymore, but this fixed effects, this expression, is still used very much, even so it may not be so completely clear why it's called fixed effects if you don't have the random effects as contrast. So you can estimate a fixed effects model simply with the LM function in R, where you add these dummy variables. You don't have to specify the dummy variables yourself. You could also just add DMA, uh, make sure that it's a character or factor variable. It would have the same effect. However, the standard computation method used by LM can be quite memory and time consuming if we have a lot of dummy variables. So one has to invert a matrix with K plus one rows and columns, and uh, where k is the number of explanatory variables. And if I have a lot of DMAs, so I have one dummy for each DMA, I have a lot of explanatory variables. And so the time to invert a matrix increases roughly uh, to the power of k to the three. Yeah? So if k increases, then sometimes this matrix inversion can take a very long time, and then LM may be very slow if we have a lot of uh, dummy variables for those fixed effects. However, um, for those fixed effects estimation, there is, exists efficient computational tricks uh, to control for them, and that makes the computation much faster. And there are different packages in R which have implemented it, and we will use the package LFE, linear fixed effects, and the function fair fixed effect linear model to estimate basically these models with uh, fixed effects. Here you see the results of three regressions. So the first regression is the one we have run before, um, where we have this interaction term and add the treatment in the experimental period dummy. And here the second regression, we don't add this um, 
this treatment dummy, but we add fixed effects for every DMA. This can be done in, in film by basically having here, we have this um, uh, vertical bar and after the vertical bar, we can add the variables for which we want to have fixed effects. So we basically add a dummy for each DMA and intuitively it controls also for this um, um, confounder that uh, the uh, DMAs are not randomly distributed between treatment and control group. Um, and we indeed find if we um, include the DMA fixed effects but not the treatment group dummies that we have this exactly the same estimated coefficient here of our uh, cause or effect of the treatment of turning off search engine marketing. It is not always exactly the same. In other data sets, you may have a different coefficient, but here we have a perfectly balanced data set. So each DMA, which we observe in the pre-experimental uh, period, we also observe in the post-experimental period. And that's the reason why we have here exactly the same estimate. So you can really think about our difference and difference estimator as controlling for the DMA specific fixed effects. And here we still have the dummy for the um, experimental period, but we could also, instead of having a dummy for being in the experimental period or not, add fixed effects for every day in our data set. Now we have, and some days are in the experimental period, other are in the control period, but if we want to control for seasonal patterns, we could just control by a dummy for each day. And that's what we did in the last regression here. So we, we I don't add explicitly this uh, dummy variable for experimental or pre-experimental period, but I add day fixed effects. And again, our um, estimated coefficient for the treatment effect does not change. It's again minus 1.33. Yeah, so this idea of the different difference regression to control for the different DNA composition in the treatment and control group can also be done by adding DMA fixed effects and the idea basically to control for the different time periods uh, by the experimental period dummy can also be done by adding day fixed effects. So you often find in economic papers that they say they um, have basically a difference in different setting, but what they actually run are such fixed effects regression. But you see it very nicely in our example that basically it yields equivalent results. And there are also kind of, there's a little bit different ways to think of uh, how we identify the causal effect, but in the end, they lead to the same results.